What is going on everybody? Eric is back in the garage. By some miracle my video camera started working again. Oh, some optical problem with the lens stabilizer or something. I don't know. It started working. So fingers crossed it'll hang in there. I really don't want to buy a new one. Um, today we're going to tackle some more electrical stuff. Uh, I'm going to work on the, the fan uh, harness and wiring. Now, let me get my stuff together and show you what we're up to. All right, so this is what we have, the Northern Radiator PWM fan controller. Um, here's the box here. I got this a few weeks ago. I haven't done anything with it. It's sitting here. Um, and I just real oh, there it is. I was going to say it didn't come with the temperature sensor, but it did. I expected it to be bigger than that for some reason. Okay, good. It does have the temperature sensor. Um, so the way this thing works is you have a temperature sensor that you put directly on your radiator um, and it measures the temperature of the coolant there basically. Um, and then this guy drives the fans using PWM, pulse width modulation, um, which allows you to have a nice slow start so they can, instead of just going bang and turning on, they can start slow, come up. Um, and in addition to that, uh, it can run at different speeds. Um, so the sensor itself here, I believe, I can read through this, but if I remember correctly, um, the fans, let's see here, yeah, I, don't know, I gotta look it up, but uh, it might be that it turns, starts from low and works its way all the way up, or it starts at half and then goes up from there, I don't remember, I have to look that up and see how it works. But anyway, this thing theoretically is continuously variable. I don't think it actually works that way, but it might for this one um, here. But in addition to that, you also have an input that you can drive externally for the AC or your, um, your ECM, ECU for the, the car. Uh, so it's got both modes. Um, so I'm going to use it in, in both modes here. Um, and so I'm, I'm going to come back to this later. But we have the control input There's a wiring diagram on this thing somewhere. There you go. So here's your wiring diagram. Uh, so this is the battery connector here, temperature sensor, and then you have the fan stuff going on here, and then you have the blue AC clutch um, to turn the thing on. Um, and there's also a force off here to have the fans turn off when you turn off the ignition. I'm not sure what I'm going to do with that one yet. I'll come across that. Um, but anyway, this AC compressor clutch side of things is where we're going to do the wiring. Um, and I'm going to do one of these things like we talked about before, uh, this kind of thing where we have the ECU and the compressor or the um, the control from the vintage air coming in so we can drive either one. Uh, so we're going to do this kind of diode array thing here. So let me sketch all that out and we'll show you how that's going to work and we'll get, get to work on that. I see that error flashing on the thing again so hopefully it's recording. All right, I think I got it right this time. I sketched it wrong the first time. so. Here's our wiring diagram. Um, so we have ECU coming in, the AC clutch signal coming in from the vintage air. Uh, this is the wire going out to the controller. And then we have ground down here. Uh, so this 200 ohm resistor right here is to let the ECU think it's connected to fans. Um, I'm not positive about this, but um, one of my viewers did mention a 200 ohm across here would fool the ECU into thinking that the fans were connected because um, it'll throw a, a fault code if it doesn't see anything on that line. Um, this path here isn't going to draw a lot of current, uh, so it may not be enough. So we'll try that. Uh, 200 ohm resistor there. So here we have um, the two signals coming in from the ECU and the AC come in through this path here and they go through these two diodes, these N4001 diodes. Um, so what that'll do is if either one of these has 12 volts on it, this line will have 12 volts on it, um, but does not allow 12 volts to go between these two. So if this is off and this is on, it's just not a short circuit path, the diodes prevent that. And then here we have two LEDs. These are just for me to be fun because I like blinky lights. Um, so if the ECU turns on, you'll get a, a red light will turn on here. If the AC turns on, the green light will turn on. And if both turn on, then both of them turn on. Um, so that's what we're trying to build. I started trying to slap this together a couple weeks ago and just kind of never finished it. So we'll come back to this. But this is basically the diagram that I started there. So here's the 200 ohm resistor and the ground line. These are the two LEDs. These are the two 4001 diodes. 
So I need to put the resistors in here across these. I got to figure out what uh, value I want to use for those. Um, and then basically just connect the wires up. This is the ECU wire, this is the AC wire, and these are the two resistor wires, and that's the ECM wire, or the controller wire going out there. So I just basically have to solder all that up, um, and I'm gonna try and stick it in this little box here, see how it goes. All right, so uh, I ended up using 1K ohm resistors here uh, for the LEDs on these little guys. It's what I used in my prototype before, so I just stuck with it. You can see those, brown, black, red um for both of these uh and how all this stuff works out the the two watt resistor here and the quarter watt like how did i figure all that out so this is all ohm's law stuff right so ohm's law voltage equals current times resistance um we're in that's the voltage form we're interested in the current form which just solve this equation for i so it's voltage divided by resistance so for the big resistor we have 12 volts divided by 200 ohms gets us 60 milliamps um, at 14.4 volts, that's 72 milliamps. Then you calculate the power is voltage times current. So 720 milliwatts for this one and just over a watt. And you said we went with a two watt resistor, so we have plenty of headroom on that one. And then for the little resistors, uh, they're 1K, as we said. So 12 volts divided by 1,000 ohms in this case is 12 milliamps, um, which works out to 144 milliwatts. And at 14.4 volts, it's one point, sorry, 14.4 milliamps, which works out to 208 milliwatts, which is just under a quarter watt. And truth be told, I forgot to calculate that before I put the whole thing together. And I'm filming this after the fact. I said, oh crap, did I make, should have those been half watt? But luckily 250 milliwatts is our budget for those resistors. So we are good. All right, we're gonna get fancy here. We got the camera out in, uh, or the cell phone in 4K mode. See how it does. Looks pretty good. Um, never filmed, it, filmed this thing in 4K before, so I have no idea how good or bad this is going to look. Anyway, I have my little uh, helping hands module here. Got my soldering iron work, warming up. So we're just going to start uh, sealing up some of these connections in here. That might look like a bit of a mess, but I think it'll do the job. I can get it to fit inside the box now. All right, I got these little LED bezel holders. So I'll measure those and I've marked this where I want to put the two holes. We'll see how it goes. All right, well, that was a failure. I didn't leave enough length on the legs of the LEDs. Um, they actually have to go pretty far down inside those things. Um, as you can see, this plastic's really thin too. I had a really hard time trying to drill this stuff out without it shattering, so. Uh, we're going to start over. So I'm going to get a green LED, pop it down in the holder, and then we'll try and solder it all in place. All right, that took a little while to get all that done. But I think we've got it. I'll attach some wires to it. All right, there we go. Now, the ground line is up at the top there, which is pretty spaced away from everything else. So... Um, short circuiting to ground is not going to be likely in here all the leads on the leds and stuff have resistors going to ground so if anything shorts out there you've got some protection protection um so i think this is okay I, did, I, I came with this little slot on the side there but i couldn't get all the wires through there so i just cut another one on the other side um to stick them all out um so last thing to do here is test this out and see if this thing works all right this is a little tricky here. I don't have a battery for the other car yet, so I keep having to use my flex for this. So here we go. We've got the ground connected to the ground. Uh, take the pink wire. I don't know which one's which here, but if I put that on the positive lead of the battery, there we go. The green lights up. And if I take the purple, put that on there. Red lights. So the red is brighter than the green, unfortunately. That doesn't really matter. Works. That's all that matters. Is that it works? Now, if the diodes that I put in there weren't there, both LEDs would turn on when I turn this light, um, which would indicate uh, that there's power going between the two sources. But since only one LED lights, that means there's no current going between the other two. Uh, I'll get my voltmeter out and make sure that there's power coming out on this one. All right, let's try this here. So purple, pink rather. Green LEDs. Sorry, put that on there, right? Getting a good contact here. One second. Yeah, 
the ground wire came off. So green, 12 volts to get off. None volts. I'll try it purple. 12 volts. Red. All right. So it all worked. Now, of course, the color scheme here is a little bit funny because the controller wants a blue wire. The AC was a blue wire and the ECM fan line was a blue light. <laughs> so they're all blue. So I just chose pink and purple over here to ones for the ones coming from the AC and the uh, ECM and then the, the blue We'll go to the controller so that color matches so there we go everything worked um uh, just let me clean this thing up and we'll call it a day here all right there we go it's all done this is not waterproof or anything but there's not really anything that can get damaged by water in here um you know a little bit might get in there but it's not going to be a big deal uh so i might put a drain plug in the bottom or something or mount it like this so the water gets out i don't know we'll see um Probably just put a little drain plug in the bottom somewhere in case any water gets in there. But that's pretty slick. Uh, so next time, we'll go ahead and get that wired up with the controller. Here's the controller. Looks nice. Um, yeah. That's going to do it for this one. Uh, I think this is pretty cool. came out pretty nice. Uh, let me know what you guys think. I uh, will catch you on the next one. See ya.